blog my name is Ewase and please before I go on I just want you guys to click on the subscribe button like share let's hear your opinion and also follow us across other social media platforms thank you okay so I want to start with the Baba Edisha case um I know we've been dragging it, like dragging it. If you like, I beg this case. Nope. Our voices needs to be heard. And I like how they're going on and on about it because right now it's getting into the ears of human rights. A lot of people are bringing their concerns. I mean, on a good day, something he could easily escape from. But from the, from the look of things and how it's gotten into the ears of certain people, it doesn't look like it. And his case has been charged to court and he risks life imprisonment. That's the win. He will be charged under the legal state criminal law of 2015. Under section 135, indecent treatment of a child. Section 137, defilement of a child, punish punishable by life imprisonment. Section 262, attempted assault, sexual assault by penetration. And section 263, sexual assault, punishable by three years imprisonment. I think um, it's a win-win for us. Because when this incident, incident first happened, it seemed like he was going to get away with it. Mostly when the police came up saying it's a bailable offense. But right now you can see it's something he has to stay in jail till the court hearing. He cannot... It's not a... This isn't a joke. This is a child's life we're talking about. It isn't. So how many that it escalated this far, thanks to social media, is is getting the 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 results we wanted. So up, I think us one, then zero. Yomi, I think at this point Yomi should just go tender an apology. To Princess, to Iabo, to everybody he's dragged, trying to take sides with Baba Yidisha. Because at this point, dude, you can see for yourself. You, I'm sure you've seen the video. But right now, I guess he's just trying to do gara gara. You know, initial gara gara. But he knows in deep inside. He lost this one. He lost this one. I'm so glad that this case is taking this turn i mean oof, justice has to be served and we need to take the issue of sexual assault more seriously now because as a female you know you can't even walk freely in the market you can't walk freely on the road you can't walk freely anywhere without people trying to drag you all these things people say my color my my height my this one yo it needs to be talked about too because most times it leads people to touch you in certain places they're not supposed to touch you. It's been 15 days since the kidnap of students in Greenfield University, Kaduna. Unfortunately, five students have been killed and they're threatening to kill 17 more if the ransom of 100 million naira and 10 bikes, motorcycles aren't paid. Now, one of the um, kidnapped student's mother talked about how they went to Gumi's house. He directed them to one Ahmed alongside a Fulani man. These parents were asked to contribute money and they raised 800,000 there. And when the money was handed to the Fulani man, he said it was, it was just for transport, it wasn't enough. And when this mother was trying to explain to him that she is a widow and has nothing else left of her, he said he doesn't care. And you just, uh, just, I just they go, they go, they go, they do meeting, they do committee meeting, then carry us to Bumi's house, and we do meeting, he said we could meet uh, this uh, uh, Ahmed, I forgot the name. They invite one thing that they come and we gather money, almost 800,000. We give her. We say that one is a transport motor. And I started crying. He said, Me and the wisdom. I don't have husband. 
I joined the train this one to help me tomorrow. Please, you say that one. No consignment. Who will be the person? The person is a fly. They invite it to come for one office for for Kaduna Dia. We just try the beggar. He said no. He said until you pay so 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 amount. He said we don't have much. He said almost say, 500 million. Initially, they asked. They, they, they were after the government paying that money, 500 million. So after. When any time they call, like me in particular, they kept calling me, Madam Kijeki Magana, the government, that I should go and talk to the government so that they will go and pay that money. So all I kept telling them was, I am a widow. I don't, I cannot have access to the government. Maybe if my husband were to be alive, maybe you know somebody who will help, who will help him to talk to the government. But I am a widow. I don't have, I cannot have access to the government. So when they kept calling me for almost two weeks. I kept telling them the same thing. So at the end, they started calling that, okay, uh, how much have you people gathered? I said, how much? Who are the people you are talking about? They said, the parents. I said, no, we are, we are poor people. Most of us are widows and even the, those that have their husbands and those that even have their wives, they cannot, they are petty, they are, peasant, they are peasants. So they don't have any money to, to, to contribute. So he said, oh. People, if government does not pay, I said, we, all we are trying to do is to see if the government can assist us. Okay, are you saying that if the government does not pay, you people will allow you to leave your children? Okay, we have already killed one. That was what he told. Being a Nigerian, living in Nigeria is, is becoming a crime. And with the way things are going for the Greenfield students that were kidnapped in Kaduna, they're going to pay with their life. Because this mess, of a government are not taking them seriously. Parents are marching down to National Assembly to demand for the release of their, of their children. And Gumei is talking about uh, CBM paying a hundred and a hundred million naira for the ransom. Our leaders will blame everyone and everything for the insecurity in Nigeria except themselves. If we're looking at it from their point of view, they are doing nothing about it. Isn't it this government that allocated about 10.2 trillion naira for uh, to fight insecurity between 2015 and 2021? Isn't it? We're suffering from inflation, unemployment, insecurity by food, by life, by farm. We're suffering from poverty, electricity tariff, petrol price, transportation, a lot of things we're suffering from as Nigerians. The level of insecurity in this Buhari regime is very appalling. People are getting killed, people are getting kidnapped, Fulani headsmen are uncontrollable. Boko Haram, they are, those ones are untouchable. They are untouchable. Cases of violence, tears, bloodshed and tragedy every day. Now, Ninja has been taken over by bandits. The Nigerian army had to rejoin their soldiers and also shut down the barracks. Let's take a look at what's going on in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
How do we go from here? Even the police in the southeast, they abandoned their stations asking for redeployment due to insecurity. It is everywhere now. It is expanding. Nowhere is safe anymore. We've got bandits, we've got Boko Haram, we've got unknown gunmen. Nigeria is a nation on the brink. Thanks for watching. This is Ninja Watch Blog, and my name is Ewase. Please subscribe, like, share, and if you have your own opinion, please do share with us. Thank you for watching.